This is In The Loop, I'm Christian Bryant. As Americans try to build a future of living with COVID-19, one crucial way to protect people from illness is all around us, literally. It's our air. Research by engineers and public health experts has found that proper ventilation can be a key part of protecting people from illness and not just COVID either. There's other types of particles, there's gases that affect our health. And we know that uh, having good indoor air quality is associated with reduced absenteeism at schools and work, um, reduced amounts of respiratory illnesses, including asthma, and um, better performance, you know, academic or embedded for kids and then better productivity. So there's a lot to be gained. The Biden administration did make hundreds of billions of dollars available for ventilation and COVID mitigation for school districts in its American Rescue Plan. The White House also put out guidance for best ventilation practices, but all of that guidance is voluntary. And the data around just how much businesses, schools, and residences are investing in ventilation is limited. But with the public health emergency in the U.S. for COVID ending on May 11th, and many decision makers moving past COVID mitigation efforts, the burden for keeping your air clean might fall into your hands. So how do you do that? In general, you want to get fresh air in and stale air out. MIT mechanical engineering professor Leon Glixman told us more. The idea in all the cases is you have a certain bad actor, viruses or the like in the air, you want to minimize that concentration by essentially adding more outside air to, to mix with the, with the, with the room uh, conditions. But a range of factors can determine how well ventilated a room is, including the temperature of the air inside or outside the room, amount of space, the number of people in it, what those people are doing, and how the vents are set up. Let's visualize this here. One solution is installing mechanical ventilation. This takes some investment of at least a few thousand dollars from your employer or local school district. But if done right, fans will collect fresh air from outside, cool it, and blow it near the bottom of a room. As people breathe things out into the air, an exhaust fan pulls that stale air up and pushes it back outside. The effects of mechanical ventilation can be huge. A study of over 10,000 classrooms in Italy found that installing mechanical ventilation in schools reduced COVID transmission. When classrooms had systems that changed out the air in a room every 10 minutes, infections dropped by nearly 75%. An author of that study, engineering professor Giorgio Bonanno at the University of Casino in Italy, says the model they developed to figure out air exchange rates and emission can be applied to other settings too. With this tool, Practically, we can estimate the risk for every kind of scenario. Imagine a meeting room with a volume, 10 person in, in the meeting room. You can uh, um, define the time of the meeting in order to have a low risk by fixing the ventilation. One other frontier is personal ventilation. Some folks have used portable CO2 monitors. These track the level of CO2 in the air around you. Because humans breathe it out, it can be an approximate but not exact estimate for how clean the air is and by extension, your COVID risk. Virginia Tech engineering professor Lindsay Marr has spent the last several years studying COVID aerosols and says that COVID outbreaks tend to occur when levels are higher. Some people like to carry around a, uh, a carbon dioxide monitor sensor like I have, and this is a good indicator of ventilation. And so the numbers on here tell me the parts per million of carbon dioxide. And for me, I generally look for something below 800 or below 1,000. You know, you can filter air on your own too. Bonanno told us he's working on a prototype for a personal air filter that he hopes will specifically blow stale air away from the user. The air enters from here. Then there is a, a filter in the device and the air exits from these little surfaces. So there is a jet. This jet uh, doesn't go directly to the subject, but uh, the jet goes around the subject, forming a kind of uh, 
Babel. A study published in March in the journal Building and Environment found that the filter he helped develop can reduce inhaled particles by between 92 and 99 percent. He hopes to eventually manufacture an updated version of his prototype filter. In the meantime, you can build a filter of your own that provides less direct protection, but still cleans the air in a given space. And it's cheaper than buying one that often costs $100 or more. Joining us now are Dr. Richard Corsi, Dean of the College of Engineering at the University of California, Davis, and Jim Rosenthal, Chairman and CEO at Tex Air Filters. They are the co-creators of the Corsi Rosenthal Box, a DIY air purification system with a publicly available blueprint. Thank you both for joining us here on In The Loop. Thank you, Christian. Thank you for having us. The first thing I want to start with here, uh, how exactly did this come about and what problem are we trying to solve here? So summer of 2020, um, pandemic in early stages, pre-vaccines, um, trying to figure out uh, on long walks um, how to provide protection for people that can't afford more expensive technologies um, that could reduce their exposure to respiratory aerosols that contain the SARS-CoV-2 virus that cause that's COVID, right? And that's where the idea of uh, the Corsi Rosenthal box came from. And there was some engineering design associated with it, late night engineering design, trying to figure out the right types of filters, the surface area of the filters, the kinds of pressure drops we would have, the resistance on a cheap box fan motor and those kinds of things. And I just threw the idea out there and said, into the wind, into the social media wind, um, and uh, a magazine quickly caught on to that. I guess they saw the tweet. And Jim, I think the very next day after I threw the idea out there, uh, he must have worked late that night. And 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 then I'll let Jim take it from there because the next part is his part of the story. I did some tests, this versus uh, HEPA air cleaner, and found that, in, in fact, because of the higher flow, even though it only uses MERV 13 filters that are uh, not real effective on the smallest size particles that this box actually uh, outperformed the HEPA air cleaners on all particle sizes. I put uh, one of these together. I'm going to remove my mug from the desk because we're going to need some space here. And I want to show you all what I, what I, what I did. So let's just, let's just take this. Wow. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Very nice. So, Very yeah, impressive. So yeah, tell me what you think so far at first glance. Um, I think it looks good. You yeah, know, it looks good. Can, can, can we see the top of the box fan? Sure. Okay. okay. I think we both agree that uh, this will this will help you. This will remove, oh. uh, be pretty effective at removing respiratory aerosol particles from the air. It would be more effective if you actually put a shroud, uh, what we call a shroud on the on the box fan at the top with about a 16 inch diameter or so. I think we I think we we have something something good here or something serviceable at the very least. You know, I want to ask, yeah. you know, how does this box solve the problem? It's a pretty simple concept. Um, drawing draws the air in the room with all the particles on it, uh, through the filters, out the fan. Um, and and not to take anything away from your efforts, it is really simple. I mean, it's pretty hard to mess this up. So there, there, are, there are really two important parameters for an air cleaner. One is what we call the single pass removal fraction. In other words, what fraction of the particles that go through the filter are actually captured by the filter? And then the second parameter is what is the volume of air per minute that you're that's coming in and out of the system? You multiply those two things together. That's the important parameter. It's called a clean air delivery rate. So the Corsi Rosenthal box has been been proven by a number of studies now to have clean air delivery rates that are anywhere from two to two and a half times uh, what you can get with a commercial HEPA air cleaner that costs about three to four times the cost of building a Corsi Rosenthal box. How do you think a box like this 
fits into the future of handling COVID? I think the future is that we're going to see more of these used, not just for COVID-19, but also for wildfires in the Western United States. And I'm hearing more and more people, you know, people have been contacting me, they email me about the fact that they have allergies and they've started using this in their bedroom at night and all of a sudden they feel a lot better. The scientists all over the world that have tested this thing, they all come in with pretty much the same view, it's not gonna work. And then they and then they they run some tests on it and they go, my gosh, it works. This is actually effective. And then we find out all kinds of things. I mean, the EPA did a study on, on these boxes um, for wildfire smoke. And they found out they were incredibly effective, um, in major reduction. So I, I think to me, there's it's not, it's not just COVID. Um, it, that was the that was the impetus. That's what started it. That's what drove it. Um, but it, it's really better indoor air quality. It is how to how to make the air you breathe um, safer and cleaner and better. Dr. Richard Corsi is the dean of the UC Davis College of Engineering, and Jim Rosenthal is the chairman and CEO at Tex Air Filters. Both co-created the original Corsi Rosenthal box. Thank you both for your time and your expertise. Thank you, Christian. Appreciate Thank it very much. Thank you for having us.